Abraham Lincoln, he said the following. Look, look at this principle. He said, um, stand by a man when he's right and part with him when he's wrong. That's very different from this America right or wrong. You know, stand by him when he's right and turn your back on him when he goes wrong and insists in being in the wrong. You know, our allegiance is to the truth. And you see in this principle, you stand by the truth. Okay? So if something is wrong, turn your back on it. That has nothing to do with us. So this America, right or wrong, that has nothing to do with the American heritage. This is an idea coming from those who are in power, who own the media, and send out this kind of message to us. Okay, even if you don't agree, let's, let's uh, be together. Even if it's wrong, even if it's horrible, we join together and we do it anyway, because that's America. That's not America. It has nothing to do with our heritage. Some people call that brainwashing. And you know what? If you want to know exactly where we're being brainwashed, where we're being misguided, it's just to know what are the ideas and principles of the Founding Fathers and measure them <coughs> against their ideas and you'll know what is incorrect, what is throwing us askew. You know, evil is evil, but consciousness of evil is good. Okay, if you have consciousness of the things that are wrong, that are horrible, then you can deal, deal with that. You can change it or avoid it and go to the good. If you're not even aware of something that's wrong, how can you solve it? As, uh, as the Reverend Martin Luther King said, there is no great social gain without individual pain. You know, what is this that I can't live here on this earth the purpose for which I am to do here? You know, if, I, if somebody is, is inhibiting me from doing that or preventing me from doing that, what is this? This has to be solved. Oh, Adams. And look at number three here. He gave a, um, much value to education and moral responsibility. It's quite moral in the sense of what is uh, honest, what is right, what is correct, as opposed to what is false the question of ethics. This was absolutely basic to these guys. This was, this was the influence of the philosophy of the persons that we just talked about, Hobbes and Voltaire, Berkeley, Rousseau. You know, they see that in the psyche of the human being, if you don't act according to ethics, you are going to suffer internally because you're acting against yourself. You know, there's no gain in acting dishonestly. Dishonest acts bring a damage to psychic life, and they wanted happiness. Alexander Hamilton, this is an exceptional human being. Look at number two, look at this. Men who flatter the people end up being dictators. They saw this time and time again, and they pinpointed it. You know, We don't pinpoint the thing very well. How many times have you heard uh, Oh, the American people, you Americans, we're so great and we're so wonderful and we're the best and all. And the United States is God and the American people are the angels of God. And all of this just to flatter everybody. Look, men who flatter the people, they end up, you know, dominating you afterwards. It's a trick. You know, if they were really concerned for us, they would point out our problems. Okay, look, the American spirit is a wonderful thing, but we're doing some things that are not so good. They don't speak the truth. And look, these guys, they had that perception. We have, we have to get their perception back. These ideals of the founding fathers of our country was fantastic. All <coughs> countries should use this because it's universal. Look, look at this one. This is the reality these guys were experiencing and passing on to this. Number four. It's a constant fight to avoid the predominance of imbalanced individuals. Okay? We, we, we verify this. Many very imbalanced individuals want power. And they'll do anything to get themselves in a position of power. We have to be aware of that. You know, we have to deal with these guys. If you want liberty. And you know, I believe, um, it's not a belief, I'm sure 
that if more Americans have a better contact with this, you identify with it. Do you identify with this as being yes. something in reality? Yes. Absolutely, Ernie. Yes, absolutely. You know, absolutely. It's just that it's not so clear to us. We need scientists like Norberto Campi for it to, to put in, in a clearly the reality of the thing. So then, then, then it, this helps a lot. You know, we can see better what's going on. You know, they think the wealth is the money. The wealth is what the money can make for us. The wealth is in the human work, the activity that we do for each other. This is the wealth. Okay? What's happening is instead of the money serving, facilitating our activities, it's the opposite. We are serving the money. Or, in other words, we are ser serving those who have all the money. Okay? So we see that the, this is a problem. We have an accumulation of enormous amounts of money that is creating a, a dominant, perpetual dominant class of people. It's exactly what the founding fathers are telling us you have to avoid. Okay? Listen to the founding fathers. They're telling us you've got to avoid this. You know, there's a difference between speculative market and the real economy. The real economy is the agriculture, the industry, the work that we do for each other. This is the, the work, this is the real economy. The speculative market, making money with money, that's another thing. If that collapses, okay, if it collapses, that's good for the real economy. Okay? Much of that will just disappear because it's just on paper. And the rest of it that's real will come into the real economy. It'll come, it'll come to us. So you can be assured that when the speculative market collapses, it, it will be better for us. After a little initial uh, confusion, it will be better for us. That money will come to the civilization again. Okay? Now, they want us to believe that if that collapses, we're going to suffer everything. No, no, they're going to suffer. They're not going to have the power in their hands to keep us under control. Okay? Now, this is absolutely a historic point in the, in the United States of America right now. Because they don't have this power in their hands anymore. They've lost it. The speculative market has collapsed. Only by blind consent, you know, if we just obey them, you know, but in actual practice, they don't have the money anymore to dominate the way they do. So the question is this. Um, if the sleeping tiger, if this generation of what we call the sleeping tiger has not died in its sleep, the time to wake up is now. The time to act on the thing is now. It's right in our hands. Okay? Let's see what happens.